on my left and angels on my right. Satan as the persecutor holding millions of records about my life and God, sitting on a throne with a mighty gavel in his hand. I had no lawyer. Placed on trial for things such as lying, stealing, and fornication, for this was the beginning of my tribulation, for there was no reason to plead an innocent statement, for all the evidence was sitting right there with Satan. The demons smiled as tears rolled down the judge's eyes, for they clearly knew that now was the hour of my demise. But wait, in came a light shining so bright that the demons smiling suddenly jumped with fright. And the man that walked in that night was none other than Jesus Christ. Darkness departed to give way, and glory was all the angels could say. As the man that walked in that night pulled out a lighter and immediately set Satan's records against me on fire. He took the sentence file and erased my name, looked at me in the eyes and said, Daughter, I'll take the blame. Handcuffs were placed on this man and he was thrown to the ground. The entire courtroom gasped at the horrendous sound and the sudden seized the beat of his heart. The man that walked in glowing had now become dark. I did this to him. My lying, my stealing, my cheating. And he took the pain and spent three days in the hell that I was to go to for eternity. I left the courtroom that day and there was nothing I could say. I was found innocent, for Christ handled the debt that I was to pay. This type of love is more than you could give to a girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife. This man died for me. I owe 
owe him my life. And even though my life is not at all worth it, how could you ever trade preference for perfect? See, I gave my life to Christ and suddenly picked up a mop. The lying, cursing, cheating, all that had to stop because my life had been bought. And it'd be a shame to sit there and do nothing but let it rot. I'm not perfect. And the will to sin hasn't completely diminished from my life. But I believe Jesus' words when he died for me on that cross. It is finished. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Remnant Revolution. We are so blessed to have you with us. And if you haven't already, make sure that you share this broadcast. I am Sabrina and I'm coming to you all the way from KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. And I'm so blessed to be with you. I see people from around the world joining us. We see Singapore in the house. There's Cape Town. There's Peter Maritzburg. There's Durban. I see Chicago in the house. Hi, guys. We're so blessed to have you with us. And I'm going to hand you over to Keith right now. Blessings, guys. I'm so excited to be on this broadcast. I believe that there's healing power on this broadcast. On. The topic that we are tackling today is a powerful topic to break the young people free. So I believe that there's healing on this broadcast. Share this broadcast today. Get your get the young people involved because they are going to be set free from a fatherless generation. I just want to introduce today our emerging voice, Kezia Balram. Kezia as a spiritual daughter of Prophet Zion and our biological daughter. So we are so blessed to have her. She is also part of the Foxfire team from Africa Enterprise. She has given one year of her life over to God. And I believe that she also has a word of encouragement for all the young people out there. So I wanna say, share this broadcast, share this broadcast. There's gonna be fire on this altar. We just wanna hand over to Kezia now to introduce herself and tell us a little bit more about herself. Okay, yes. Hi, guys. Hi to all the viewers. My name is Kezia. It is such an honor. I'd like to firstly thank Prophet Zion, and I'd like to thank the hosts, Keith and Sabrina, for being able to give me this platform to impact the youth and to use my life and my story to be able to impact the young people, the young generation out there. I am expectant myself. I know that there's going to be a power, there's going to be a glory, and I know that lives are going to be changed. I know that hearts are going to be changed, and I know that God is here to do something, and that every viewer that is here is not here by chance but by divine appointment so i'd like uh -huh. to thank you I'd like to thank god for giving me this opportunity and this platform and that i know that god is about to speak thank you amen amen i believe that this is a destiny changing moment there is fire on this broadcast today there is a word that needs to go out to the young people God is going to do something today. So share this broadcast because we are sounding the alarm. We are saying that the Nazarites are coming forth. The remnants are rising. Our arms are wide open. There are a generation of radical, lovesick warriors coming forth. Somebody hashtag, I am a remnant. Somebody put it in there. I am a remnant. So we're going to kick off with a few questions that we have for last week. And we see Namibia's featuring and Namibia's in the house. There's some fire going on in Namibia. So we are going to start off with Fidelio. And Fidelio from Namibia has a question for us. And Fidelio says, how can we get free from false identity? And so Keith is going to answer that one for us. How do we get free from false identity? Family of God, I believe there's only one way to get free from false identity, and that is finding the truth. The word of God says that the truth will set you free. And I believe that there is a process to becoming free, especially from deep rooted hurts that cause identity problems. I believe that you need to read the word of God because the word of God renews your mind. I, I believe that you need to get plugged into a church with power because the power of God breaks the yoke, uh, yokes, breaks the chains breaks things on you that you don't even know sometimes that are on you. So I believe the truth will set you free and being in a true place of worship, being under the power of God, being in the word of God will set you free. So I hope that answers your question for Delio. Yeah. 
I think that was a powerful answer there, Keith. So now I'm going to go over to Shanique. And Shanique is also from Namibia. Hi, Shanique. We see you there. And Shanique would like to know, what are the greatest identity, identity thieves in our generation? So Kezia, can you help Shanique out with that answer? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you to Shanique for your question. So your question is, what are the greatest identity thieves in our generation? And I'll start by saying the greatest identity thief, in my opinion, has to be social media. Why I say that is because the world we live in, social media portrays an identity, a worldly identity that our generation is trying to follow. And I know that social media is showing us what the world wants us to be like and how we can fit into the world. And it goes against biblically what God says we are. Um, if you look according to social media, it has standards. It has a criteria that, that the world counts as perfection. And I, and I say right now that the Bible gives us a criteria of what we are. Social media will portray um, light-skinned women or light-skinned men as beautiful, and it gives us a criteria, but God's word says that we all are beautiful. And so social media has stolen the identity of our generation. It has, it has polluted the identity that God has placed within us. The second thing I would say, the second identity thief um, would be a low self-worth. A lot of people don't address these kinds of issues, but a low self-worth is an identity thief because you question your own worth. You question the identity God has placed inside of you and you compare yourself. And so lowering your self-worth, you tend to seek for things. You tend to seek um, appreciation and acceptance from the world. But God says that you are his and that you are chosen. And another thing is self-condemnation. That is also an identity thief because you condemn yourself and you say that you aren't worth it based on your past or based on what you've done in your life. But self-condemnation is stealing the identity of our youth because we ourselves, God has placed such a purpose inside of us and that we should never doubt that. Look at what the Bible says, not what the world says. Look at what the Bible says. For example, in Psalm 139, it speaks about you being fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what God calls us. He says that you are a people, a generation that is fearfully and wonderfully made. If we look at Isaiah 43 verse 4, God says, you are precious to me. In my eyes, you are precious and you are honored and I love you. And I really believe that the only way we can counteract these identity thefts is to go to God's word and see what God's word says. And God says, um, that we are we are worthy and that we are called. I think that's powerful, Kes, because when we know our identity in Christ, we know who we are. We know the power and the authority that we carry. So just quickly, guys, I just want to declare the word of God. I want to declare that there's going to be fire on the altar and that there is going to be a transformation through this broadcast. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, that today, Father God, identity will be found in the courtroom of heaven, that we will come into that secret place where we find you, where it's you and us and we are one in you father and i pray that today father god under the sound of my voice that every person that is struggling with identity will find a true identity today i believe that through this broadcast identity will be found i believe that through this broadcast healing will come forth i believe that today father in the name of jesus i pray that father god there's a portal of heaven that is open today father god and that you are throwing down scrolls and mandates and mantles and that lord jesus the youth and the young generation of today will pick it up as Say, pick it up. Someone hashtag, I'm ready to pick it up. I say, pick that mantle up, pick your sword up, and get ready for battle because today I declare the word of the Lord and I declare that today there is going to be fire, fire upon your life in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just pray right now, Father God, over every young person, oh Lord, that is carrying a shame, that is carrying a condemnation, oh God. We break it over them right now by the blood of Jesus. I just sense in my spirit as well right now that there are many of you that have come through a valley and you carry the shame over you, that many of you stand as Samson and your hair has been cut off and you have been put into a cage and into a prison by the wrong choices that you have made. But I speak to you right now and I call 
call you out of that prison. I call you out of that cage that you are in. And I ask you to take your hand and place it at the back of your neck right now. And I speak to you and I tell you to pull off that yoke off your neck. And right now, as you pull that yoke off your neck, you will feel that the hair is starting to grow back. The hair is growing back, Samson. The hair is growing back. So I speak to you and I say, rise up, Samson. Rise up. Rise up, Nazarite. Rise up. Rise up, Nazarite, right now. Because God has more for you. God has a purpose for you. And right now, you might feel that your eyes have been taken off and that you can't see what tomorrow holds. But I speak to you because even though your eyes cannot see, there is a vision inside of you. So do not look with the natural eye, but look right now through the spiritual eyes that God has given you and look at your vision. Focus on your vision. Focus on the purpose that God has planned for you. And right now, God is going to speak. And you are not going to act through your natural, but you are going to act in your spirit. So I call you right now, Nazarite. And I call you and I say, arise. Arise in the name of Jesus. Kezia, do you want to declare the word of the Lord right now? Yes, right now, I really feel in the spirit that God is saying, lean not on your own strength, but lean on mine. I really believe that the generation that we are in right now are isolating themselves from the world, isolating themselves from God, hiding themselves, just as Adam and Eve hid in the garden when they sinned. I really believe right now that the young people are hiding themselves, hiding themselves, thinking that God won't be able to find them, thinking that they are ashamed, thinking that God no longer loves them. But I declare right now that young people rise up and put your trust in the Lord. I declare right now vulnerability, not to the world, but to God. Give it to God. Everything you're holding on, give it to God because that burden, that burden, that isolation, that th those things that you are holding on inside of you are going to break you. But there is a God that can make you. There is a God that made you. There is a God that created you. There is a God that can read your mind. There is a God that knows how you are feeling. He knows what you are going through even before you went through it. So what I say right now, do not be like Adam and Eve. Do not hide away from God because he will locate you. No matter where you go, no matter where you hide, no matter how much you cover yourself up in your shame, God comes and he opens his arms to you. He reaches out to you. The only thing you need to do is reach out. So Father God, I declare right now that the young people will begin to rise up, oh God, and lean not only in their strength, but in yours, oh God. Heavenly Father, I pray that every shame and condemnation that they face, oh God, you will give them strength, oh God. You will locate each and every one of them, oh God, that you will give them an inner vulnerability of your spirit, oh God. And I just declare right now, young people there is nothing to be ashamed of there is nothing to be ashamed of you are called you are chosen you are holy the world can tell you that you are none of these things but i declare right now that you are holy you are chosen you are necessary in this world god birthed you for a reason you are placed on this earth for such a time as this he breathed his life into your nostrils for a reason i declare that the youth will rise up in their identities in in their godly images and that they will take their rightful place and know that they can accomplish, that they are chosen and that they are called. Amen. Amen. And and to the, to the viewers, you know, to you young people, we are here to keep it real with you. We believe that, that there are real issues that you are facing. And that is why we want to keep it real with you. We want to tell you about the raw, unadulterated word of God and that he knows exactly what you are going through. And so, Kezia, I want to take this back to you. You've uh, recently shared um, on the platform your painful experience. So we know that you've gone through a painful experience in your childhood. Can you take our young people through that and, and just tell us about what God's done for you? Okay, yes. You know, um, I have grown up and I've faced a lot of things in my life that I definitely believe God has handpicked me for. Um, so sharing my a bit of my testimony with you, um, I faced such a big trauma at such a young age. At the age of eight, I discovered what it was to feel lost and I lost my father. And so dealing with it in life, I realized that I really was different from the rest because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do the process the way everybody else does. And um, I focused more on giving of myself than being able to give for myself and being able to receive for myself. And I went through life not knowing what to do, not knowing where to go, not knowing how to feel. 
And uh, there were times when I didn't even feel. And I realized that walking through life, sometimes what you have to do is you got to open up. Something that's very easy for young people to do is close up because we think that we're protecting ourselves. We want to protect ourselves. We don't want to feel that pain. We don't like to feel it. So we close ourselves up. But closing all of that inside breaks you more than opening up. And that's one thing that I didn't do, but I learned to do at such at such a, an older age, something that I should have done when I was young. And so I believe that God gave me that testimony to be able to help young people to heal. Because going through life not healed, not fully restored, you seek things in the world. You don't seek in God. You seek things in the world to fill that emptiness. And that's where you go astray. That's where you lose track. That's where you lose yourself. And so I've reached a place in my life knowing that once you give everything to God, he gives everything back to you. You give him your void, he gives you a sense of wholeness. You give him your pain, he gives you restoration. And so if I can say anything to the young people from my testimony is that you need to trust God, trust the process and know that everything happens for a reason. Mm, amen. Amen. That's powerful. And I think, you know, as in, in our childhoods, we deal with these hurts and with these issues, but there are people that don't deal with it. We want to hide away from it. We want to put it in the corner of our minds and we don't open up even to the father, because when we create this world, we don't realize that we're not just blocking people out, but we also seem to block out the Lord and we, and we choose to take this battle on our own. But Keith, what happens then? if we don't deal with these childhood hurts? Well, uh, coming from experience, I know, I know for the fact that when you don't deal with these childhood hurts and you don't give it over to the father to heal you, it starts popping up in your life at stages when you don't want it to pop up. For example, if you dealt with uh, being a fatherless person, when you finally become a father, there's certain things that start popping up in your life that start affecting you being an actual father. So I believe it's very, very important. I'll use for my example. I got a father and I've got a mother and I got, I love them, but my father could not be the father that took me to the father. He was the father that provided for me. My mother tried to take the role on to be the father, to lead me to the father. And I want to say to all the men out there that you need to be, need to be the father that takes your children to the father. And when you become a father, be the father that takes them to the father. And what starts happening is because they are rooted hearts. They are rooted things within you. You see a woman is designed to be a mother. A woman cannot take the place of the father. A woman cannot take the place of a man even although we are one in the spirit we are sons in the spirit the role of the father and the mother is totally different the role of the father is to show the sons the children of god a way to god and i believe that if we do not deal with those issues it will fit it will bring about giants in our life that we will not want to deal with at a later stage a lot of people, a lot of leaders are actually dealing with root causes, rejections, and you see it in the way they father, the way even spiritual fathers. We are so blessed to have Prophet Zan because even although he went through some issues and he will share those issues with you all guys, he knew how to deal with it. And today he can stand as a true father. I believe that we need to deal with these issues. We need to seek and ask God. But God, there were some issues in my life I didn't even know existed. I had to ask God, God, what are these issues? What are these root causes that keep on causing sin to pop up? What are these issues that keep on causing me to feel the way I'm feeling? And God had to take me to the throne room of heaven and he had to show me uh, situations that happened in my life in my past six years old seven year old situations that I thought or I believe that could never ever affect me but God had to show me that I had to let it go I had to let it go I had to let go and let God and when you let go and you let God God will heal you I'm just declaring this I sense that there are a lot of fatherless figures on this broadcast now I want to say to you all that maybe your father's present in the natural maybe he's been around there but I want to say that maybe he has portrayed a fatherless image to you guys and I want to say that the father God the father is the father that will lead you into heaven and I want to say that 
what God will do for you, your earthly father can't do for you. Yes, there's pain. Yes, there's hurt. There's rejection. There's single parents, parents, there are children out there, and you have a dual role. But I want to say to you that you need to give that role up to the father. God the father will lead you and guide you. And I believe today that you need to lay it down. Lay it down before the throne room of heaven. Ask the Holy Spirit to start showing you. What are these root causes? Because you need to remove these root causes. You can be 20 years in ministry, 30 years in ministry, but when that root cause pops up and starts bringing, bringing about some memory, you go back to the place you used to be. That hurt and pain starts be causing the people that you are leading hurt and pain. So I want to say that become a shepherd, become a person that will lead people from a place of being healed. I am broken, damaged, shattered, and crumbled to a million pieces. What started as a small crack in my windshield was never taken care of, and so it split and splintered and snapped until the whole thing exploded in my face, leaving me quite blind to see where I was going. How do you build yourself back up when every piece of who you are has been broken into a million pieces? When the pit would be a paradise compared to my present pain? When lifetimes of crying couldn't clean up this stain, I writhed from the floor, wondering what all this gore was for. Is there purpose to this pain? Can there be meaning in my mess? Where can I find beauty from my brokenness? And from this darkness, and when I can't find the strength to say it, much less pray it, suddenly I discover that my life can become a mosaic, a picture or pattern produced by putting together small, broken pieces. I will become an art piece, formed from the pieces of me that once put together reveals something far more beautiful, far more powerful, and far more wonderful than I ever dreamed of when I was whole. So break my body. Break my heart. You can't touch this soul. I may walk with a limp, but my spirit has never been stronger because after blow after blow, I'll build up slow and discover my new glow. So when you look at me, I want you to know that's not a scar. That's a beauty mark. Those aren't scabs. They're the armor of a mighty warrior. It's not a bruise. It's war paint. I want you to know these tears, they're not for you. They're for watering the seed that fell to the ground and died. But with time, will produce an even stronger tree, stronger me. So chop me down, break me apart. You'll only add more wood to the fire from which I'll rise. And the size of my burden is only outdone by the size of my breakthrough when I shock the world and get made new from the pieces. A million pieces. Come on, people, I want us to start releasing the glory upon this broadcast. I believe that today we need to start tapping and breaking forth because the King of Kings is in the house. And I believe that today we need the glory cloud upon us that, Father, in the name of Jesus, we cast every high thing down. We break every glass ceiling, Father God. God, even today, Father God, as we tackle real life, Father God, I come against the spirit of depression. I come against the spirit of rejection. I come against every spirit that will rise up against this broadcast. I say, Father God, release your glory. Release your fire. Release your glory. Release your power. I feel today, Father God, that there is such breakthrough on this, Father God, that those that are suffering with depression, that spirit, I root it out. I root it out. By the blood of Jesus, I root it out. Every spirit of depression, rejection, I call you forth. I root you from the from the from the loins of every person.
person. I root you out now by the blood of Jesus. I declare that there will be fire, that the fire of God will purge you, that the fire of God will purge you. There's people on this broadcast that are suffering with depression. I want to tell you that the only healer is Jesus, that the only healer is Jesus. We want to speak now life life into every dead situation every dark situation i just want to hand it over now to sabrina and she's going to declare the word of god over depression i think right now i'm just going to expose i'm going to expose it right now in the name of jesus i feel that there has been a rejection there's been a rejection that's got this person into a dark place and right now we expose what the thief is doing because he's taken that rejection and he's caused it to turn it into a soul wound and there's been a bleeding that has been happening internally you have been bleeding internally and you haven't been seeing the bleeding and it's been causing a wound and you haven't been hurt by the cut but you've been killed by the infection and right now the lord is saying that i'm coming to heal you right now the lord is saying that i see through you and that i haven't left you and that i haven't forsaken you because hasn't Jesus been on the cross? Haven't you heard these words before? Where the Father said, Father, well, Jesus said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? But he was at the cross and he was at that cross because he was carrying it for you. He carried that depression for you. He carried that pain for you. He carried it all upon the cross. So if you want to base your life on any Base it on that event. Base it on the day that he died upon the cross of Calvary for you. And I break that spirit of depression that is hovering upon you right now by the blood of Jesus. You have no hold upon the generation you have no hold upon this generation i see the lord jesus right now and he's stitching you back together every broken piece comes together right now by the blood of jesus there will be no more depression in your life stop filling yourself up with the things of the world that cannot fill you it cannot fill you it cannot fill that wound you've got to address that wound you've got to give it up you've got to open it up to breath to life to the breath of the lord only his breath over it can create the healing power to heal it it doesn't matter it needs to heal it needs to heal you need to open up your arms i see right now that there's someone that's arms are their hands are closed and your hands are closed because you're holding on but you cannot hold on you need to open up when you open up you release and when you release there comes a, a sense of worship at the same time so in your pain in your pain let your praise come forth so that the garments will come off the heaviness will come off it will shake off it will shake off in the name of jesus we destroy every depression right now we break the yoke in the name of jesus we come against it in the name of jesus I believe now right here on this broadcast, even as Sabrina was declaring the word of God, the Lord showed me someone with cuts on hand. I don't know who you are, but it, the cuts on your hand is a symbol of depression. And God today is going to heal you. God is going to set you free. The Lord showed me clearly that you're actually doing it, not because you want to kill yourself. So it's because it's a way to escape and God is showing me that today there's no escape but there's only escape in him he is the author and the finisher of your salvation he is the gate to heaven and I want to declare today that depression is a spirit depression will not hold you down no longer depression is something designed by the enemy to captivate and capture the young generation of today I speak life I say no more antidepressant the only antidepressant you need is the word of God I see rivers of living water will flow through you. The spirit of depression has rise, risen up even in the church world where we see leaders go into depression because it's such a strong spirit. But I want to tell you today that you need the word of God to renew your mind, that the spirit of depression will not hold you captive no more, no longer, that those chains are falling. Those chains are falling now. I want you to ask so chains are falling. Chains are falling. I hear the chains falling. You need the sound from heaven to hear the chains falling. When you start hearing and releasing that word of God over your life, go and look in the mirror and say, I am more than a conqueror. I was born for more than this. Depression will not hold me back no longer. And I I will be set free today by the blood of Jesus. I want you guys 
Well, guys that are suffering with depression, I know it's not a nice thing. We all suffer at some stage in our life with some form of depression. But I want to say today, God don't want none of his people, none of his children to have the spirit of depression. And depression starts from root causes. And those root causes grow with you. And you start getting depressed. And it starts affecting the atmosphere around you. Let me remind you guys, we are atmosphere changers. We are glory carriers. We are nations shakers so we will not allow that spirit of depression to hold us bondage that spirit of depression we cast you back to the pit of hell now in the name of jesus yes yes yes, yes. right now i hear the chains i hear the chains keith i hear i hear them right now the enemy is afraid of this generation the enemy is afraid of you right there where you are in your home he is afraid of you and that is why he wants to keep you in the place that you are in in that depressed state so he can alter your personality because he wants to mess with your identity because as soon as you know who you are he has no game he has no game when you start walking in who you are called to be he is afraid of it he is afraid of who you are and he, it's making him tremble. So you got to rise up, child of God. You got to know who you are. You got to know your identity. You got to know who your father is. You got to know. So, Casey, I'm just going to take it back to you right now. And um, I, I just want to I just want to ask you about a little bit about rejection, because it can sometimes be the cause of, of, of the depression, you know, that, that we're sensing right now, the rejection that we face. So can you just tell us about the types of rejection that maybe you've encountered and how you've dealt with it okay yes so first of all you know when we think about rejection we think about being rejected by someone we think about being rejected by something but the type of rejection i felt is a rejection no one knows about it's a rejection that no one speaks about it's a rejection that's hidden and that's self-rejection it's self-rejection mm -hmm. where you choose to put other people before yourself, where you choose to put other things above, above yourself, when you choose to neglect your own feelings, neglect your own heart and your own pain, and you try to hide it away. Self-rejection is what is killing our generation. Self-rejection is what is causing people to be depressed, causing people to be in pain. It is causing suicide. I really feel that right now in my spirit. I feel right now that there is a generation that is rising up, but suicide is coming to wipe us out. The devil does not fear us. He fears our life. He knows that our lives have purpose. He knows that we can only do what we can do because we have life within us. So he's coming to take that life from us. I know what it's like. My testimony I shared with you, going through that trauma, going through that loss, I rejected myself. I focused on on my family i focused on my friends i focused on everything else but myself i rejected myself to the point where i had no meaning no purpose i felt nothing i have battle scars from self-rejection i have battle scars from disappointments from from depressions i know what it's like to feel like you're alone i know what it's like to feel like no one is there but I'm telling you that the devil fears you. Just that, just as Serena said, the devil fears you. He fears your life. He fears that. So he's not coming. He's not coming to take away your possessions. He's not coming coming to take away your friends. He's not coming away to take. He's coming to take you away. He's coming to take your life away. But we need to stand strong. We need to deal with this depression. God, God. Give it to God. We need to deal with this with this self rejection. We need to deal with these pains and these hurts. We will not be wiped out. I declare that this generation will love to see what God has called for this generation to see. The Bible says that there should be a people that will not die until they see the kingdom of God present with power. And I believe that our generation is the generation that will see the kingdom of God present with power, that we will not die. The Bible says so clearly that we are a people that will not die. And so I believe that the spirit of suicide is coming to take away our lives because once the devil wipes us out, there's nothing left to defeat him. But God, but God has placed such purpose. He's placed such authority. He's placed such dominion inside of you. And the enemy wants to take that away. The enemy is not doing it to harm you. He's doing it because he's intimidated by you. He's doing it because he fears you. You do not fear him. He fears you. And he tries to convince you that 
you are fearful, but you are not. He is the one fearful. He is scared for what you are about to do. So when the thoughts come, when depression comes into your mind, know that you are intimidating the enemy. When you try to kill yourself, when you try to harm yourself, know that God has placed purpose inside of you and the enemy is trying to take away something that is much bigger than himself. I know what it's like to try and take away your life because you feel like you have no purpose. But I'm telling you, it's at these low moments that God will come and he will reveal himself to you. Let me tell you, when you hit the pit, when you hit rock bottom, there is only one place to go and that's up. And so all I'm saying right now is that God is going to pull you out of this pit. I know that it seems that life is hard, life is tough and you have no meaning, but I'm telling you something. Give your life, give that one thing the enemy wants from you. Give it to God and God will use that. God will use that. God will pull you out of that pit. God will take away any self-rejection, any depression. He will take away any pain that you are feeling inside of you. He will turn it around for his good. And for those of you who have attempted suicide, don't be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Our scars are not scars. They are battle scars. These are indications that we live this is indications that the enemy didn't wipe us out. This is an indication not to show that you tried to kill yourself. It's not a sign that you are weak. It's not a sign that, that you that you tried to lose your own life. It's a sign that you made it. It's a sign that you can look back and see that you made it, that the enemy tried to take you out. But a warrior is not a warrior unless you go through a war. The war is what makes you a warrior. And so when you look at this, these are not scars. These are nothing to be ashamed of, but these are battle scars to show that the enemy tried to kill you, but he can't. This is to show that you are indestructible in God. This shows that you have power that is beyond the earth. It is beyond the enemy. And I'm telling you, when you feel these things, know that the enemy is coming for you because you are coming for him. Yes. And I think one of the biggest problems we are facing in this generation we are, we are living in a fatherless generation. I say that again, we are living in a fatherless generation because you see when children go through depression and rejection and all sorts of things, they start looking to their fathers, whether it's their natural father, whether it's their biological father, whether it's their stepfather, whether it's their spiritual father, they start seeking guidance. And because we are living in a fatherless generation, we, uh, the uh, youth and the young people out there don't know what to do. So they start doing things in this world that are not of God. Kezia, I just want to ask you, fatherlessness is a real issue. How would the young people of today deal with this issue? Okay, so let me take it back to help a bit of understanding. If we look at a child, a, a human being being conceived, it takes 50% of its mother and it takes 50% of the father. And both of those come together to give you 100% of a child. If we look at that in life, in the natural and in the supernatural, you get 50% from your mother, 50% from your father, that gives you a sense of wholeness. But if you take away that 50% of a father, you become fatherless and there is a void, there's a gap that's left in between there. And the mother cannot fill in more than her 50%. So as much as mothers try to try to take on the role of the father, there will always be that sense of emptiness. There will always be that, that, that void that's on the inside. So fatherlessness leads to a void that is inside of us. And what we do is we try to look for father figure lookalikes. We're not looking for the real thing. We're not looking for the real blueprints of fathers. We're looking for father figure lookalikes. If I can give it to you in a, in a literal form, if you take real money and you take fake money, Fake money looks the same. Fake money does the same does the same thing. Fake money is the same size, the same shape, but at the end of the day, it doesn't fill, fulfill the same purpose as money that is real. And in the same way, a lot of us young people, if we grew up fatherless, we look for father figure lookalikes. I'm going to give you some real examples. If we look at this, a young girl who grew up without her father. If we look at a young girl who, who didn't grow up with a father, a fatherless young girl at the age of 15 starts dating a man that is 35 years old. That is not a father figure. That is called void occupation. And that's what we do. We look for things not to seal the void or to fill the void, but we are looking for things that occupy our void. And the thing with that is it's temporary. It's temporary. It comes and it goes. It comes and it goes. And it leaves you searching for the rest of your life because that void is not fully filled inside of you. And so what, what happens is we look for cheap knockoffs of father figure lookalikes in our life when God says, I am firstly the father figure. I am firstly the father figure. In my life, I was fatherless at a stage. 
but God became my father before he gave me the original blueprint of a father figure that I needed. So God became that. And once he became my father figure, then only did he provide me with a father figure that was according to the original blueprint. A lot of us get confused and think that fathers are biological fathers. No, that's not what it is. We are not in such of fathers. We are in such of father figures. That is what we need. That is what we need to look for. And so God gives you that father figure. That's what you need to look for. And, and I want to declare right now that every father figure that has rejected you, God is a father that says, I accept you. And once he accepts you, he will give you a father figure that did not do what that father figure did. And he will give you a father figure that accepts you. For every father that has abused you and abandoned you, God is a God that pulls you into his arms and he loves you and he cares for you. And once he does that, then he gives you a father figure that does the same. You see, the thing that God does, which is so beautiful, is he gives you a father figure according to himself. So everywhere that your father figure lacked, he makes up for it and he gives it to you. For every father figure that said you were worthless, God says you are worthy. And he will place a father figure in your life that says you are worth it. You are respected, you are loved, and you have purpose in your life. So all I'm saying to us young people, be open to it. Accept God as your father figure first and he will fill in that void. And then God will bless you with a father figure that you need to be ready for. Wow. That, that is powerful. And I think, you know, you know, Kezia, what you're saying is so right, because it's not just in individuals that you find um, there seems to be a sense of, a, of fatherlessness, but it, it, it echoes in, in, in our society, it echoes in the church, it echoes in, the, in our nation. And it starts right there with us. It starts right there in our homes. It starts in our churches. We need, there's, there's that father-son relationship that sonship that needs to happen. The Keith, can you just tell us? Do you all, do you? What do you think of this? Can you can you tell us maybe if the son that you are today does that affect then the father that you maybe become tomorrow? Definitely, I believe that the son you are today will affect the father you become tomorrow because every son will one day become a father. I say that whether it's in the natural or whether it's in the spiritual, you will one day become a father. And God reminded me of the story of King David. You see, King David, he had a natural biological father who was Jesse. And Jesse, in, when I started reading the story, I came to believe even when, uh, when uh, Samuel came to anoint a king, Jesse rejected David because J David was in the field while his other brothers were chosen to be anointed to be the king uh, to be the king but I believe that he was a rejected one and I believe even when he went uh, he went to be under King Saul he also because he carried uh, a root cause he carried the spirit of rejection that when he went over there that same spirit of rejection popped up and because of the God was always with David God was always with David. So what had happened is uh, over there is he had one spiritual father. He had one father, biological father. And then when he went to King Saul, he had another father figure. But those two father figures couldn't get him to God. I want to say that again. Those two father figures couldn't get him to God because he had Samuel who came and anointed him. And he... Samuel could get him to where he wanted to be. And you see, sometimes our biological fathers can't get us to where we need to go. Just like Kes said, we need father figures in our lives. Sometimes our bi biological fathers don't have that restraining order over our lives. Like our spiritual fathers will have that restraining, over, uh, restraining order over their lives to take us into our next. And I believe that for every son that's going to become a father and for every father that today you need to be healed. You need to be set free. I believe that a lot of things popped up in David's lives. Even when, he, life, even when he was anointed as a king, he still started committing some sort of sins. And I believe because he grew up fatherless and I believe that he had rejection and hurt within him that he never let it go. And only until he realized that he had a restraining order with, uh, with uh, Samuel, he could let things go. Even when King Saul, uh, Saul sent people to kill him, he was under the covering, under the restraining order of Samuel. No one could hurt him. And I believe today that you need as sons, you need to find your spiritual father. You need to find someone that's going to have a restraining order over your life. You see, a restraining order determines 
who protects you and how they protect you. You see the man, the father is the head of the home and the, what flows down from the head flow, what flows from the head flows down. So I believe that today you need to be plugged into a father figure that's going to release you to be a manifest son of God. All creation is groaning for the manifest son, but it takes a father, a leader to get you into that, to become that manifest son of God. You see King David, he realized that Samuel was the only one that could take him into the blueprint of heaven that, that God had designed for him. So I believe, I want to declare today that many of you all that are sitting on this broadcast are sitting in a fatherless place. Even although you might have a father, even although you might have a spiritual father, but because that's not the restraining order of heaven, you will not fulfill your purpose. You will not come into the alignment for your assignment. And I believe today that God is going to start removing the scales from your eyes. Even the people, I just want you to hold your eyes and ask God, declare that God will start removing the scales from your eyes today, that you are able to see what the plan and the purpose God has for you. I want you to declare the word over your life that God has set up a divine appointment in the heavens for you. We are seeing so many prophetic words about fatherhood and sonship. We are seeing the apostolic and the prophetic move of God. The apostolic and the prophetic move, move is the father and sons, the father and the manifest sons, one to build, one to see. The seer anointing is coming forth to the sons of God. I believe that even as you're praying for your eyes, God is even going to release some of your into the sea anointing today and I believe that you need to be a good son to be a good father I believe that today you need to be a good son to be a good father you need to up your game you need to raise the bar you need to do what God has called you to be as a son first before you've been a father you see the world today because it's a fatherless generation we need to Find a father that will shepherd us that will raise us up in the ways of God and will show us the way to heaven yeah and I think right now, as Keith was just talking about when Samuel went in, that David's father had rejected him and had not called him. So David had this gap in, gap in his heart. So, so what I wanted to say as well is there was someone else that was rejected that day. It was the eldest son. And I, and I never saw this before, but Eliab was also rejected that day. And, and that must have been painful for him as well. He didn't even ask to be king. And yet he stood there and he passed around and he was rejected because he wasn't the he wasn't the one. And that was also a painful rejection that happened on that day. And and what had happened was we see when David went into into battle to face Goliath, David went to carry food to his brothers and he comes to El, uh, the same brother, Eliab, and he says to him, he says to David, I see the wickedness in your heart. So the same rejection was carried forward by the brother that was rejected. So rejection is something that you carry forward in your life if you don't deal with it. And it was seen there. And that rejection was also shown to David by his father. So right now, I also want to pray against any generational rejection that has been carried forward. Anything that has been carried forward through your bloodline. I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. I bring it forward. I expose it. I cut it off right now. You know, we, you've heard it before. And it said that it's come through my bloodline, but it stops at me. That is what I declare over you today, that it stops with you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. What if God moved again in such a way that was undeniable? What if we witnessed events leaving people speechless, purely unexplainable? What if expecting lives to be transformed became unquestionable and we experience a surge of revival? I know some of you love Jesus, but you're scared, terrified. I mean, what would the people at work say? If I publicly confess my faith in the Savior, what's gonna change that day? Will my friend group roast my name? Will my family even be able to look at me the same? I know you're battling, thinking if I truly go all out in my walk with Christ, I just don't know if it's worth the price. So you got one hand on the Bible and the other on your status, gripping it as an idol. Let's be honest though, we all need the Lord more than we'd like to admit, but it's so much easier to blend in with the crowd so we don't look like misfits. Even when our best friend could be going to hell, our intentions are strangled by fear, wishing we would have had the courage to tell. And we say our nation is living in important days, but our common topic of debate is who's the GOAT, LeBron or MJ. I know I'm not the only one who was fed up with seeing anything but God's best. I mean, do we really want to look back in our lives and say, well, I guess we just ended up like the rest. 
So let me ask you this question, if not us, then who? Who's gonna be the one to step out? When culture screams, this is not popular, it's not in and it's not cool, are you gonna be the one willing to look like a fool? I mean, what if our obedience was just as radical as the way we talk? And what if our actions matched the way we boasted about our walk? The time has come. The Lord has ignited a movement of people and he's calling his army to move outside the walls of the steeple. We don't want the prosperity gospel we've been hearing for a while and trust me, we're done settling with a comfortable lifestyle. Give us something raw. Give us something authentic. Give us Jesus. This is a generation that's bold and we don't fit a society's mold. A people fearfully and wonderfully crafted in his image, carrying the power to change the world beyond man's limits. Sons and daughters are prophesying his fame all for one name, catching fire from love, radiating the glory coming from the heavens above. As God breathes resurrection wind in this valley of dry bones, with his spirit awakening billions of souls who once had hearts full of stone. It doesn't matter who you are. Whether you're in the business arena or called to ministry, the Lord is calling you to be unashamed to represent the King of Kings. A new wave has begun, a generation daring for the kingdom to stand number one. That's exactly who we are in the sun. The drought is over, revival is now. Are you in? Are you in? I believe it, I believe it, revival is now. So as we start to bring this off to a close, Kezia, would you like to pray over our views for today? Father, everyone on this live video right now, God, you called them because you needed them to hear this word. Father God, I thank you for, for the change that you've brought about in their hearts right now, oh God. Heavenly Father, I cover them right now under the blood of Jesus, oh God, that you will continue to manifest yourself so intimately in their lives, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will continue, that your voice will prevail in the silence, that it will prevail over all right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare that your power, your fire, and your glory will be what they operate in right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that you called each and every one of them, that you gave them life for a reason and for a purpose, oh God. Father God, I thank you that you take them on a journey in your love, oh God. Father, I thank you that you begin to grow them right now, grow them in their faith, in their walk, oh God. Father, I thank you for each and every life. I thank you that they are so precious and priceless in your eyes right now, oh God. Father, I thank you right now for every fatherless person, oh God, that you will reveal yourself as that father figure that they are desiring and that they are longing for right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray over every person that is facing the spirit of rejection, oh God. Father, let them know that you accept them, oh God. Thank you, Father, that you place people in their lives that will accept them and help them, oh God. Every person dealing with being abandoned or feeling alone, oh God. Father, I pray that you reveal yourself so deeply and intimately in their lives, oh God. I pray that their hearts will be open, oh Father. I pray that closed fists will begin to open up again. I declare your power right now, oh God, over their lives. I thank you, God, that the Holy Spirit will begin to minister into their inner beings. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will begin to cover their minds, guide their minds, their thoughts. Heavenly Father, I thank you, oh God, that you will continue to work in your people, that you will rise up the warriors, oh God, that you will rise them up and, and that you will wake them from their sleep, oh God, for our time has come. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will place a, an identity in each of us and every one of them, that they were indeed born for such a time as this. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare your word over their lives. I declare what your word identifies us as, oh God. Father, I thank you, God, that you give us worth, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I declare this over your people. In the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. We just thank Thank you, Father God. And right now, I just declare, oh Lord, that blindfolds are coming off in the name of Jesus. I declare, Lord Jesus, that you will sound the alarm, almighty God, and that your remnant army, oh Father, will hear that sound, oh God, and will stand to attention, Father God. I call in the remnant from the north, the south, the east, and the west, Father God. I call them forth, Father God, that they, oh God, will stand, oh God, ready to fight, Lord Jesus, because, Lord, this is a war that we are in, oh, Father God, and we recognize it, Lord, but we say, Lord, we are a generation, Father, that is willing to stand, oh, God, as watchmen on this wall, Father God.
Father God. We are saying, Lord, that we will stand for the cause, that there is a cause, Father God, that we will stand for our nation, Father, that we will stand for those, oh God, that come, oh Lord, after us, that we will stand, we will be those ones, oh God, who will lay down our lives, Father, who will say, Lord, that we want more, Father God, who will say, God, that we will go through the fire, Father God, we will go through the fire, purge us, oh God, purge us, oh God, remove, oh God, all, oh God, that is not of you, Father, so that we can be made holy in your eyes, Father God. So I pray right now, Lord, for those, oh God, who are going through different parts of their lives right now, that you reveal yourself to their mighty God. Reveal your love. Reveal, oh God, yourself in your majesty, God. And do all that you need to do according to your will, Lord Jesus. I just thank you, Father. I just thank you, Lord. I just thank you. Even now, as Sabrina was praying, the Lord showed me that there's a young girl on this broadcast. You walk the walk, you talk the talk, but in the night, under closed doors, and when no one can hear you, even your parents don't know that you are suffering with the spirit of depression. I see you crying in the night when no one hears. I see you wiping your tears when no one hears. I want to say that the spirit of God sees your pain, and today he wants to heal you and set you free, that you will cry no more, and when you walk that walk and you talk that talk, you will have the spirit and the authority of God, you walk this life, you walk on this earth and you and you say, God, I want more, I want more, and I want more. But you don't know that the spirit of rejection and depression is keeping you bound. And I want to declare today that God is going to set you free. He's going to start pouring oil upon your head. You're going to actually feel within, even as under the sound of my voice, you're going to start feeling a weight lifting off you. You're going to start testifying of what God has done for you. And you're also going to lead many that are suffering with the spirit of depression and rejection out. I just want to thank God for what he's doing on this broadcast. I want to thank God that he's setting many people free. We believe that he is setting you free today by the blood of Jesus, by the finished work of the cross. You are set free in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody hashtag right now, I am set free. Come on, I am set free. So I just want to say thank you to all of our viewers, all of you young people. Remember, you are the fire. You do not need a platform to get out there and to declare the Lord. Your lives are a testimony of who the Lord is. So that happens in your circles, in your inner circles, in your outer circles. We are a reflection of who the Lord is. So I want to thank you. Remember that we love you all, that, that we are here to pray with you. The number will be on screen. If you do need prayer, our team is here. We are praying for all of you. Pray for us as well. We want to say thank you to Prophet Zion Matthew as well. Thank you, sir, for, for, for your prayers for this generation and for this program and for allowing us to be on this platform. We love all you guys. We pray for you guys. Thank you, Kezia, for all your input on the, onto the program as well. And we'll see you next week. Remember, let's get as much, guys, as we can get on as possible. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.